be looking after their children and providing for them and desiring them. When we understand, if we remind ourselves of God's desire for us, we can let go of the desires of the material, of sex, of the world, and not be in enmity with God. But who would know the heart of God, the, the, the zeal of God, the jealousness of God? Well, if you're a parent, you can uh, grasp a little bit of that, I think. A little bit of God's heart as you look at your children. You know, uh, yesterday was my daughter's birthday, her 15th birthday. And, uh, you know, we congratulated her on, on you know, so being gro uh, growing up so fast and uh, being a woman of God, maturing in the Lord. But I told her on the side, you know, Rebecca, to me, can you stay 14? Why don't you just stay 14, not go to 15, but stay 14. And then she looked at me in a strange way. Daddy, you're weird. And uh, she didn't reply, actually. Um, but how would she understand daddy's heart? Daddy wants her to stay a little bit longer together at our home. And we don't, I don't want that time of departure to come too soon. How would we, we, we know the heart of God? God does not want us, us to depart from Him. He does not us, want us to stray to idol worshiping and adulterous relationships. That is the heart of God. When we understand and comprehend every day the desire of God for us, it will help us to flee from our sexual, our material, fleshy desires of the world. But like I said, our determination is weak we need the holy spirit we need his reminder to flee the desires of the flesh i want to share with you a youtube clip that i saw recently it's about somebody um filming documenting uh people uh and telling them that they're beautiful and look at their reaction how they react We are doing a small university project where we have to take a picture of something that we find beautiful. Okay. <laughs> and obviously we find you beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're actually making a project and we have to take pictures of things that we find beautiful. <laughs> okay. Picture of something that we find beautiful. Okay. okay. Picture of things that we find that are beautiful. We are taking a picture of something that we find beautiful. Okay. Picture of things that we find beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you think? Yeah. Picture of something that we find beautiful. Okay. Pictures of things that we find beautiful. <laughs> Not me then. <laughs> you are beautiful. I don't know what it is. Anyway. <laughs> the picture of something that we find beautiful. Okay. Are you taking a picture now? Yeah. Of things that we find beautiful. Oh, <laughs> my smile or me. <laughs> Everything. Everything. <laughs> picture of something that we find beautiful. That's pretty beautiful. I don't know about me. The Australians are making rough down under. We are taking pictures of things that we find beautiful. Okay. Pictures of things that we find beautiful. Aww. <laughs> You are beautiful. Thank you. Something that we find beautiful. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Things that we find beautiful. Okay. Things that look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Things that we find beautiful. Okay. Which is the case. Of things that we find beautiful. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Of things that we find beautiful. So we're finding beauty. Oh. Find beautiful. Find beautiful. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, do you see how they just, you know, flower up? Uh, they are expressing their their pleasure as somebody telling them, you know, you are beautiful. They're just exploding with joy. You can see the genuineness from the expressions. As the Holy Spirit tells us, uh, God tells us that you are beautiful. You are my son and daughter. We can outlive the desires of the flesh we can grow out of that we can flee from that desire i'm reminded in romans chapter 8 verse 16 of what god thinks of us it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god the holy spirit reminds us that we are children of god you are my beautiful child you are my son you are my daughter as we remember that it will give us the power and strength to flee from the desire of the flesh, desire of the world. And so we can make a determination. Why don't we do that this morning? We make a determination this year. God, I want to change myself. I want to flee from the lust of the flesh. Help me to, Holy Spirit, help me to remember how much you love me, how I am loved, what a beautiful child I am. Let's make a determination. The heart of wisdom, the wise heart, is the person who fights their fleshy desires with the Holy Spirit desire. And James gives us a second point, second principle for us to remember as we fight this battle against fleshy desire. What is the wise heart? Second, it is this. It is the determination, again, determination to obey the word of God. We find in this in verse 6, six to 10. Uh, Apostle James uh, is more proactive now than just saying flee from the desire. He's saying, let's obey the word of God. Instead of just fleeing uh, away, where do we flee to? We flee from sexual material desire to submitting to God. That's what his point is. But before he gets there, verse 6 says, remember this, remember this, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble, those who submit. There's a contrast, right? The prideful and the humble. God opposes, he's against those who are prideful. He hates those prideful people, but he gives grace. He blesses those who are humble. Why is that? Well, arrogance um, has to do with Satan. That's why. God hates Satan. Um, the original sin that we committed, that you and I, all humanity committed, was the sin of arrogance. I want to be like God, right? We want to take his place. That's our arrogant sin. That's the original sin. But the originator of that sin is Satan himself. He's the fallen angel. He's the fallen messenger of God who committed the original sin of arrogance and pride. So if we follow his path, Satan's path, we are enemies with God. But on the other hand, as we submit to God, we flee under his wings, under his care. We not only are accepted by God and we are graced by God, but we get to flee the temptation of evil. We get to flee the thoughts, the captive thoughts that lead us to chaining to sin. And therefore, in verse 10, the last verse, he concludes, James concludes, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. The true way to be exalted is not exalting yourself, but letting God do it for you as you humble yourself before God. A true wise heart comes from a true relationship with our Heavenly Father. He is our shepherd and we are the sheep. As we know our right place, we call that beautiful. We call that right. 
we call that why. Just like uh, when a sheep knows its place as the follower of the shepherd, it is a beautiful thing when the children of God follow the leading of God and humble themselves before him. More specifically, we follow the word of God. You know, yesterday, uh, we, as I mentioned, we relocated our church, moved all our stuff to the new location, Redwood City. And uh, it was a big project for it happened over many months, three, four months at least. Uh, but we had to categorize all the stuff, right? Things to take with us, things to sell, and things to discard. We had um, responsible peers, persons, leaders over all these things. And, um, you know, over the many months this happened. And yesterday was the big day when everything came together. We did all three things at the same time, you know, grand scale, uh, all three things at the same time yesterday. But, you know, I can tell you, witness to you that it was the most harmonious and beautiful and most edifying experience ever at our church. Because uh, everybody, there was no grumbling. There was no complaint. Everybody, you know, 10 people, I don't know how many people there were, but worked as one person in one accord with one heart. How was that possible? It was because there was a leader and there were, there were followers. There weren't grumblers or complainers. Everybody acknowledged the authority of the leader for the, for the moving task force, relocation team. You know, um, as a pastor, I see things and I want to suggest and do things differently, right? And I made a commitment in my mouth, in my heart, to put a, a brittle in my mouth, not say anything, just obey whatever uh, the leader is uh, directing. And, and everybody was the same, I think. And so when one, with one accord, we were able to make this beautiful transition together. As we obey the word of God, it is a beautiful thing. And we can experience the blessing of God, the grace of God, in fact. And uh, I'm reminded of this verse of Jesus. He says, whoever has my commandment and keeps them, he is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see that? God will show himself to you as you obey his will, as you obey his command. It is a beautiful thing before him. It is a wise thing before him. Let us resolve this year. Resolve this year and determine ourselves to obey the word of God like never before. We have 52 Sundays this year. I guess now we've consumed three Sundays, so we have 49 Sundays. Every Sunday, I want to challenge you to make one uh, a specific application as a result of the sermon. You know, last week, um, I suggested that let's read the Bible. You know, let's read the Bible this year at least once. Uh, and uh, I wonder if you've obeyed, if you've taken my suggestion. I've read 10 chapters this week every day uh, to renew my covenant with the Lord to read the Bible. And uh, we can obey one thing every Sunday. And a person who's determined to obey God's word is the wise person. Of course, you and I will fail, you know, uh, obeying all the things that God tells us. That is a weakness. But it starts with a seed, a determination to obey God's word. And how much more grown would we be at the end of the year? How much more showing of our faith would you and I be doing as a result of every day, every week obedience to the Lord? Can we determine at this time to obey the word of God as a seed so that God would expand our lives? God would use us as a, as a, a shiny 